This is a Biology 10 review video for the topic of co-dominance. In our previous examples, if we had a dominant flower, as we have this red flower here, and a recessive flower, homozygous recessive, with this white flower here, we would expect to get um, the gametes as follows. The gametes should separate the two dominant alleles here and the two recessive alleles here. They would then combine to produce heterozygous individuals. Now, if we were to predict the color of these heterozygous individuals based on the parents and based on which is dominant and which is recessive, we would expect the following. Under regular dominance, we would expect the offspring to all be red um, and to take after the dominant trait. In co-dominance, however, you get the following effect. Rather than red offspring, we see offspring that are both red and white, hence the name co-dominance. Red doesn't overpower the white, and white does not overpower the red. They are both present equally. Since both are equally dominant, it does not make sense to have lowercase letters for the white flower. So instead... Both traits receive their own but different letter to show that they are both equally dominant. And so now we have a new Punnett square with our dominant red flower, homozygous, and our dominant white flower, also homozygous, leading to heterozygous offspring but the alleles are designated by different letters, and they're both capitalized to show this new co-dominance rather than the regular monohybrid crosses that we saw before. So to sum up, the co-dominance is when both genes are expressed. And in our example, the red flower and the white flower create an offspring that were essentially maybe red with white stripes. The genotypes of the parents are, have both capital letters, to create heterozygous offspring with different letters. So in co-dominance, all genes and allele, alleles are shown in upper case. Now the first example was the P generation producing the F1 offspring. Relatively simple cases, both of the parents are homozygous. What would happen if we crossed the F1 offspring to create the F2 offspring and mated the brothers and sisters together? Pause the video and do that now and then check your answer. Okay, you create a Punnett square to produce the F2 generation. We have our two parents, both having identical um, genotypes. We separate uh, the genes and alleles into the respective gametes. So we have R and W and R and W. And then combine to produce the appropriate children. And so we end up with uh, four different possible, um, well, of the um, types of children you can have, three possible children, um, red, homozygous for red, homozygous for white, and heterozygous displaying both red and white. Now attempt to give both the phenotypic and genotypic ratio for this cross. For the phenotypes, we have red, red and white, and white. And for the genotypes, we have double R, RW, and double W. For each of these types, then, what is our fraction ratios or our percents? Well, the number of red flowers is 1, red and white 2, and white 1. So we have a 1, 2, 1. 1 ratio for a phenotypic ratio, and a 1 to 1 ratio for our genotypes as well, expressed as a percent. Notice that the phenotypic and genotypic ratios are the same. This is common in co-dominance, as each variation, whether you're homozygous or heterozygous, has a different phenotype. As well, some students ask, uh, which gene do we put down first, if it's RW or WR? Just as a note, uh, because it's somewhat arbitrary, we use alphabetical ar um, order. 
So R before W, X before Y, and so on. This is the end of the video reviewing codominance. The next video will introduce codominance and blood typing.